Hey, 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 happy Tuesday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Gaming Gang Dispatch is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McLear, your host here at the Gaming Gang Dispatch, brought to you by thegaminggang.com, which I happen to be the grand poobah. So welcome aboard. Tonight is Tuesday, May 18th, 2021. This is live stream number 666. Yikes. Yeah, 666, eh? Hmm. Keeping my fingers crossed, nothing goes wrong. Anyway, welcome aboard. Thank you very much for joining me. If this is your first time kicking back with me, let me point out about the first half of the show, I always share the latest in tabletop gaming news. And then in the second half, we always take a look at a tabletop game. Might be a board game, role-playing game, miniatures rules. Who knows? But if it's going on on your tabletop, we are probably talking about it. Tonight, I'm going to take a first look at Dive, which is from Sit Down Games. This is coming to stores next month. It is arriving in stores in June. I do want to point out this is kind of a prototype copy that I've got. This is not exactly what you will find in the game itself, but there is uh, a specific component that I guess is, people are making a big deal about in this game. We will get to see that. That is in here. Anyway, so if you are uh, a longtime viewer, thank you very much. Always appreciate you stopping by to hang out. If, uh, if you are watching live or on Memorex, please do me a favor and give this video a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ding that bell. Because it'll not only let you know when the Dispatch streams live, Monday through Thursday nights, right here on YouTube. It'll also let you know when I upload other videos, such as my review of Dungeons & Dragons. Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, which arrived in stores today. My review has been up since the weekend. And I will mention something about the review in just a moment. But also do want to mention when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. I always point out there's a lot of content on thegaminggang.com that you will not be exposed to here on the show. For an example, I've got a lot of role-playing game reviews that Sammy Juhas has done, and uh, they are excellent reviews. You're missing out. They are written. They are not videos. So... Anyway, I also should mention, because this is a live stream, chat is also available. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. But I do pay attention to chat. So if you want to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question, a comment, by all means, chime in. I will do my best to respond. First out the gate tonight was the Motor City Madman. Yes, the Motor City Madman, the Madman himself, one of our chat moderators, was first saying hello. We've got Disavowed92, JP Falconer Honor is here as well, or as I like to refer to them as JPF, makes life a little bit easier. So, as I mentioned, I, uh, I've got my review of 
Van Richten's guide to Ravenloft. I, I, I just keep wanting to say Von Richthofen. Yes, the Red Baron's Guide to Ravenloft. And if you have not checked out my review, I basically say it's eh, all right. So it's okay. But it's really aimed for dungeon masters and especially those who really love Curse of Strahd and the whole, you know, Ravenloft setting, which is actually multiple worlds, right? I have to I have to laugh. I, I've gotten some comments. I've gotten some emails as well <laughs> from people who are bitching about my, my review and how wrong I am, and they haven't read a single page of this book. <laughs> it's like, man, you Dungeons and Dragons apologists out there, <laughs> you're, you're a piece of work. You really are. Not saying that anybody watching the show is a... Dungeons and Dragons apologist. But I mean, the book is okay. It's just not phenomenal. And we have not seen something phenomenal from Wizards of the Coast for Dungeons and Dragons in a while. It has been a while since I thought something was, wow, this is really good. I thought Salt Marsh was pretty good. I think that's the last one I, I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I really do recommend this. Like, highly recommend it. Anyway, so, yes, the disavowed says, what's love got to do with it? Well, I'll have my review of Call of Cthulhu, Does Love Forgive in the Very Near Future? Should mention, if you enjoyed all the Call of Cthulhu content last week, the fine folks over at Chaosium Inc. are sending me another four major Call of Cthulhu recent releases, including the Berlin Guide, which I think they're sending me the Leatherette, like the collector's edition of it, uh, as well as, uh, what is it, Doorways? I think it's Doorways to Doom. And the, what, tri like there's a like a trio of terrors. So it's four, I, all I know is it's, it's four different releases that are coming my way and they have shipped out. I just got an email today telling me that those have shipped out. So we might do another call of Cthulhu week in the near future. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Anyway, Nicholas Stanishek has joined us as well in chat. So our chat is off and running. So let's jump on into the news of the day because up for crowdfunding, for Fireside Games is a deluxe edition of Castle Panic. Here's the skinny. The Castle Panic Deluxe Collection is the long-awaited ultimate deluxe edition of Castle Panic and all of its expansions. This giant box contains five games in their limited edition deluxe versions, including Castle Panic, The Wizard's Tower, The Dark Titan, Engines of War, and the brand new expansion, Crowns and Quests. Each game retains the same mechanics fans have loved for over a decade, but now feature deluxe upgraded components. Each game comes with all new art, plastic walls, towers, and castle pieces, plastic monster minis that feature a unique spinning base to track damage, wooden monster tokens, promo cards, a deluxe monster bag, playmat, and much more. This massive collection features 180 plastic pieces, including 97 monster miniatures. Castle Panic is a cooperative game for one to six players where everyone is working together to defend a castle from monsters coming in from the forest. The players must make it through all 49 monster tokens and have at least one tower still standing in order to win the game. The monsters destroy all six towers, the game ends, and the monsters win. In the Wizard's Tower, a friendly wizard joins your forces, giving the players access to powerful magic spell cards. But the monster army returns bigger, smarter, and faster than ever before. In the Dark Titan, the ancient Titan Agranak, I am Agranak, returns to lay siege to the castle. <laughs> Take it a guess. 
Agranach is preceded by his heralds and brings new monsters, while the players get help from support tokens and the Cavalier. Engines of War brings a whole new economy to the game where players can assign tasks to the engineer and collectively pay resource cards toward those tasks to build traps and weapons. Meanwhile, the monsters press the attack with siege engines and new creatures. The newest expansion, Crowns and Quests, introduces playable characters with unique powers. The players must attempt to complete challenging quests, such as retrieving magical items, destroying cursed temples, and even teleporting the entire castle to safety, all while fighting off the monster army. This collection is the centerpiece to the Castle Panic Deluxe Collection Kickstarter, and as such, will not be available through retail distribution. There is a short Kickstarter video for this. Let's take a peek. The forest is filled with all sorts of monsters. They've gathered an army and are marching towards your castle. Can you work with your friends to defend your castle against the Horde? Castle Panic is a cooperative game for one to six brave players, where you use cards to slay monsters as they advance from the forest to the castle. This brand new deluxe version includes monster miniatures and plastic castle pieces to immerse yourself into the fray. The Castle Panic Deluxe Collection includes four expansions, the Wizard's Tower, the Dark Titan, Engines of War, and Crowns and Quests, which can be combined in any way you wish for a truly customizable experience. Own the ultimate Castle Panic adventure by backing now on Kickstarter. This project is already past the quarter million dollar funding level. You can reserve a copy of the deluxe edition starting at a $90 pledge. There are a lot of different pledge levels available. You can pledge through June 3rd with an expected delivery of next May. So Disavowed92 says, Castle Panic's a great game for young and old alike. The Madman's curious if they offer the box and deluxe components separately. They do. I don't know if it's the box, but I do know, like I said, there's there's a bunch of different pledge levels. And there is one that is just for the plastic pieces. So if you already have all the expansions, I think there's one that's just for the expansion and plastic pieces. But... This is something I want to point out, and I and I'm not gonna. I don't. I don't. I don't mean to pick on Fireside Games, because I, at least until recently, I've always thought that uh, Justin and, and and Marie Dewitt were pals of mine. Although strangely enough, I had to find out about this Kickstarter like secondhand. Nobody reached out to let me know that this was live. See, this is one of the reasons why, and I'll talk about this after the news. I'm not going to carry on about this all the time, but this is one of the re one of the kind of things that is leading me to not cover board games as much as I have in the past for the past eleven years, and it's that kind of stuff where I, you know, I've shared news from companies and done interviews with companies for over a decade, and then suddenly it's like. They're, you know, forget forget about the guy who got you to the dance, right? Anyway, this is something that I think is, is an issue. It's a problem right now in tabletop gaming. And like I said, I, I don't mean to pick out Fireside Games, but does Castle Panic need miniatures? Does it really? Because let's remember, Castle Panic is actually designed as a kid's game, not as a little kid's game, because there is a special Castle Panic for the little ones. No, Castle Panic was designed for, like, you know, ages 10 and up. I don't see this as a miniatures game. And once again, to me, this is simply overkill. If you want to get all the goodies, it's a $200 pledge. And I, I find it difficult to say, hey, you know what? 
what is essentially a kid's game with some expansions that kind of you yeah, kind of raise the level a little bit, but it's still kind of a kid's game. A $200 pledge is uh, it's a bit high. So this about 92 says visual appeal is everything in board games at the moment. It, well, visual appeal, visual pop has always been a thing. But look at like Everdell, which I think is an excellent game. I love that game. I think it's a fantastic game with the tree. And that's got a really great visual look to it. Didn't need any miniatures for it. So I think there's just, I don't know. To me, it, and for one, these aren't even painted. These are painted minis. So it's like, okay. So uh, so you're going to have the, the 12-year-old paint all the minis for you? I highly doubt it. So this about uh, 92 says, yes, visual appeals, everything. Gameplay is second. Well, at least here we know this is a good game. It's just, like I said, I, this is this is something that I think is a problem right now in tabletop gaming. And you have all these people who take to social media to complain that, the, you know, they're priced out of the hobby. They don't have an opportunity to enjoy this hobby, which I don't necessarily agree with because there are a lot of ways to enjoy this hobby for very little money. But when you see something like this, a $200 pledge level to get all the goodies for what is essentially a game for 12-year-old kids, yeah, I find an issue. So, Flaming Heron's with us in chat, by the way. Do you want to uh, to point out? So, Disavout says, Simon's guilty of this. But see, Simon is the one who started all this. Cool Mini or not is the one who started it. And I got to be honest, I can't really say much about them because they are a miniatures company. They always were. So they weren't a game company. They were a miniatures company before they got into uh, board games. Actually, I don't know if folks know this. You know what? Rather than folks looking at that, let me jump over to here. I guess I'm going to go off on a mini tangent. Not really a tangent, just a some people out there may not realize Cool Mini or Not actually was mainly known for being a website where people would post painted miniatures and you would vote, was it a Cool Mini or not? So, so JPF says, Dwellings of Eldervale. I've heard of that. I, I may have done a news piece about that. Went to extreme with mini monster bases that produce monster sound effects. Jeez. But it is a great game, though. Well, it's, it's a good game. If it's a great game, then, well, okay. But, yeah, some of, the, some of the stuff, some of the chrome that is being applied to some of these games is kind of, kind of. <laughs> so, Fleming here, it says a mini tangent. Love it, double meaning. So you caught that. Thank you. I'm going to go off on a mini tangent. I was wondering if anybody would pick up on that, but Flaming Heron did. Very cool. All right. Like I said, I'm not trying to dissuade anybody from backing the uh, Castle Panic Deluxe Collection Kickstarter by any stretch uh, because it is a good game. It is a good game. And... Fireside was one of those companies that was having was having a hard time of it with all the cult of the new or, you know, every every week, everybody's like, oh, my gosh, got to have this game. Oh, got to have this game. So they were kind of getting squeezed off of store shelves. So good to see that they finally got this launched because they tried to launch it last year. Well, they did launch the Kickstarter and then they canceled it. I'm not sure why. But they, because they originally were going to have this deluxe collection for the 10th anniversary of Castle Panic, which was actually last year. So, anyway, plus, you know, I like Justin and Anne-Marie. I'm just, 
I got to be honest. I'm a human, right? I'm a little hurt that neither one of them reached out to tell me about this Kickstarter because I have interviewed them umpteen times. I always stop by and chat with them whenever I see them at a convention. Even if they have nothing new, I still pop over and we talk for a while. I don't know. Like I said, it's getting to the point where, yeah, these companies don't care about the 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 person who brought you to the dance, you know, who helped get you in the place you are now. I don't know. All right, moving right along. Let's jump on into our next news piece because here's another game that's got some miniatures and I don't know if it needs them. Hitting stores from Steam Forged Games is Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game. Here's the deets. Enter a lush and post-apocalyptic world where machines roam wild and take control of an aspiring hunter with a single goal to make their name with the prestigious Hunter's Lodge. In this semi-cooperative board game for one to four players, work alongside your hunting party to track and defeat machines for glory. Discover and trade resources to upgrade your equipment and level up your skills to prepare for the final hunt. Fellow hunters are your allies, but also your competition. Assigned a dangerous quarry by the Hunter's Lodge, players choose a tribe and class for their hunter and embark on an adventure through the wilds. A variety of machines and unexpected events lurk along the way, and awaiting them at the end of the trail is a lethal boss fight. Combining innovative and dynamic game mechanisms with strategic deck building, Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game, offers players a unique experience on each playthrough. Hunters can develop along several skill paths and purchase a wide variety of ammunition and equipment from merchants, as well as facing entirely different encounters each time. Only the most cunning... Oh, I have a cunning plan, my lord. And skillful can rise through the ranks to eternal glory. And for those who fail, anonymity awaits. Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game, is for one to four players, ages 12 and up, plays in around 60 to 90 minutes, and does carry an MSRP of $99.95. I do believe there is a variety of expansions with more miniatures that you can add to this. And I swear there is actually, I don't know if they made it or not, but I do remember when this was a Kickstarter, there was a miniature that was going to be like, it was like four feet tall. And maybe I'm, exaggerate maybe it was three feet tall but they showed a comparison of like the third i assume these are 32s because very few companies are making 28s millimeter anymore most are going a little bigger with the 32s uh it, it was like dwarfed by it i mean it was like little tiny and then here's this big ass thing like i said i don't know if they ended up making it but it was pretty wild so there you go. Another game with miniatures. So <laughs> JPF says, I'm waiting for Pong, the board game. Yes, but what they'll do is it'll actually be that special four-player Pong. And then you'll have miniatures of the paddles and the square dot that bounces across the screen. Those will all be miniatures. And they'll be, uh, they'll be made from silver is why I understand and they won't be available. It will not be available through retail. Something else we should talk about. I think that's what we will talk about. These Kickstarters that are not going to go to retail. We'll talk about that a little bit when I finish up with the news. Because I honestly think it is going to come back and bite some of these companies hard. All right. Let's talk about some role-playing game news. Currently up for crowdfunding is a new role-playing game from Penny for a Tale. I've got the scoop on Necrobiotic. I keep wanting to say Necrobionic. So hopefully I don't say that. A post-apocalyptic game of melancholy. Is it all a facade or is there truth beneath the new order of existence? The decay started around 
2020, and in less than 30 years, we lost centuries of growth. In 30 years' time, the world changed as we knew it. Birth rates sank, deaths spiral out of control. Imagine for a moment that everything you take for granted is gone. Your video games? Oh my God, no! <laughs> Why? your supermarkets, your electricity, and all but 5% of every person you've ever known. One could expect here that the well-being of the population is at a profound new low. Add to that the grim reality that their survival relies solely on the use of the animated bodies of their dead loved ones. And you begin to realize the bleak and irreparably grim existence the survivors must bear. Survivors formed communities, barricading themselves behind the walls of makeshift fortresses. Outside, the land is reclaimed by nature. Mankind fell to an apocalypse of harmless and quiet ruin, not with a bang, but with a whimper. In the end, the dead that come back to haunt us were of our own creation. In Necrobiotic, you can taste the whole spectrum of emotions. It's the rainbow of emotions. Taste the rainbow. From the deepest horror and the bittersweet melancholy to the most moving compassion and the lightest laughter in a continuous celebration of life and a rediscovery of its fragile uniqueness. The original illustrations will drag you into the alleys of a wounded Florence among human corpses with tanned leather hides, eternal monuments, and coarse, foggy streets. The original game system is based on deck building mechanics with a standard deck of playing cards, though tarot cards can also be used. Players will also always know what they can do alone or together, and the game's mechanics will easily push the player's role play toward the character's features, highlighting everyone's specialties. Microbiotic is a dark celebration of life where survival is paramount. It features unique and emotional art along with a new card system that will draw your players into our grim future. There is a short Kickstarter video to give you a better idea about this game. So let's take a peek. The dead walk among us. It was we who put them back on their feet. We needed someone to cultivate our fields and sweep our streets. The world, as we knew it, is long gone. We all expected a nuclear war, an epidemic, or even an apocalypse to be the end of us. They never came. Rather, for reasons still uncertain, our population shrank. Suddenly, fewer and fewer births, paired with higher and higher death rates, brought our population to its knees. No simple answer to our population decay. We simply began to shrink. Here behind the walls, protecting Florence from the outside world, and under the leadership of the Citadel of Science, we persist. This is Necrobiotic. Necrobiotic is over 200% funded. You can reserve a copy of the role-playing game in hardcover for a $45 pledge. You can grab it in PDF for a $25 pledge through June 11th. Unfortunately, I do not have any sort of page count to share with you. Expected delivery is next February. Kind of cool. This sounds kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, it's another one of them. They are hipster role-playing the games. If it ain't Dungeons and Dragons, I don't want nothing to do with it. Sounds kind of interesting. So I have to point out, sometimes I share some role-playing game news, not necessarily because I think you want to actually use those mechanics of the game and play it. A lot of times I should, I'm not, I'm not necessarily <laughs> like denigrating this game at all. I'm just saying the concept of it sounds very interesting. And any of you out there who have been game mastering for any amount of time already know that 
there's nothing better than stealing stuff from other systems to plug into your game. <laughs> so, I like the artwork, too. This looks kind of cool. This looks kind of cool. Uh, Boris has arrived in chat. Good to see you, Boris. Uh, he, gosh, I'm not even going to get the pronunciation anywhere close on, on this person. So, a uh, double G has joined us in chat. Says, brr, not a fun game after a hard day at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's been a hard day at work. I guess we're going to play some of this post-apocalyptic. Our dead loved ones are, are brought back to life so they can service us. Flaming Heron says, ha ha, nothing wrong with something which is in D&D to me. Of course, that's why I did kind of my, kind of did one of them, them their voices here. <laughs> Don't be messing with my Dungeon Dragons. So I had to ask, uh, where was it? Where did I just see that? Disavowed 92 uh, asked, what are we doing tonight, brain? Isn't it? What are, what are we doing tonight, pinky? I know that's right. No, you're right. It is brain. But I'm curious. Did you did you write that because I said uh, I've got a cunning plan, my lord? I'm just kind of curious. Just kind of curious. All right. So moving right along, there is a new bundle of holding. I know we just talked about a bundle of holding yesterday. Well, a new one's arrived, and this one is focused on BattleTech: A Time of War from. Catalyst Game Labs. Here's the dope. Mech Warrior. Climb down from your Battletech mech for tabletop role-playing adventure using the 2013 Battletech A Time of War rules in this all-new Battletech A Time of War bundle. Hey, by the way, I guess we're talking about Battletech A Time of War. Choose your life in the stellar empires of the far future. Pilot, spy, mercenary, merchant, scientist, scout, renegade, enjoying the centuries spanning conflicts of the clans, inner sphere, and periphery. When, with the ATOW rulebook and its companion expansion, you'll explore the rich Battletech setting and, if you also enjoy the board games, lend new dimension to your tactical encounters. How will you become a legend? For just $12.95, you get all three titles in the starter collection with a retail value of $50 as DRM-free PDFs, including the complete full-color 410-page A Time of War core rulebook and its essential A Time of War companion, plus the art book Battletech 25 Years of Art and Fiction. If you pay more than the threshold price of $25.92, You'll level up and also get the entire bonus collection with six more titles worth an additional $63, including three era reports for the years 3052, 3062, and 3145, and the adventures Necromo Nightmare, Empires of Flame, and War of the Tripods. You can score these savings through June 7th and 10% of your payment after gateway fees will be donated to this offer's pandemic-related charity, Direct Relief. Sweet. I gotta be honest, I know absolutely nothing about Battletech, a time of war. Strangely enough, the cover of the core book, which is what we're looking at right there, kind of makes me think that, what, was this given kind of a, like a bubblegum crisis, uh, full metal panic sort of vibe to it because kind of seems like that. But, uh, I, you know, I gotta be honest, this is not something I had ever heard of before. Granted the game came out a while ago, almost 10 years ago. And, uh, I don't, I guess maybe it didn't catch on. I don't know, but I almost never hear anything about Battletech role-playing from Catalyst Game Labs. So I don't know, but Hey, you can check it out. Pretty cheap. Get on board for $12.95. All right. My final news piece available right now from Green Ronin Publishing is Fantasy Age Trojan War. 
here's the details. Cross the wine dark sea and storm the walls of Troy again. Fantasy Age Trojan War revives the classic third era historical fantasy supplement in streamlined form for the Fantasy Age RPG. This book explores the Homeric Age, a period that's half history, half myth, and all about dramatic action, where gods and heroes battle each other in the inescapable judgment of destiny. Enter the Iliad and other ancient tales in Fantasy Age using a host of new options. Play Archean Greeks, Trojans, and other ancient peoples from Amazons to the Divine Offspring with new backgrounds appropriate to the era. New talents and specializations from the swift-footed fighting style to Amazon ferocity and the strange magic of the Pharmacius. There's a new magical arcana items and discussions of the role of magic in Homeric mythology, weapons, armor, and other gear appropriate to the Homeric age, including rules for hit locations and partial armor in combat. There's chariots and ships of the Homeric age, as well as rules on how to use them. There's rules for divine intervention, which let gods and heroes meaningfully interact without compromising divine immortality. Fall under the eye of a deity through a divine bond or feel the wrath of their manifestations. There's advice for game mastering the Homeric age from changing mythology to suit you to interpreting fantasy age monsters through the lens of Greek mythology. This 66 page book is available through drive through RPG as a premium soft cover for $17 and 99 cents, or you can score it in PDF for $9 and 95 cents. I am kind of curious though if the page count might be wrong on drive through RPG because this sounds like there's a lot in this book. It seems like it would be more than 66 pages and we know that drive through RPG is not always right on the money with their page counts. Sometimes they're off by like 100 pages. So I don't know. I don't know. All right. So there's some discussion going on about uh, Battletech and some uh, some setups. Yeah, I haven't played Battletech in a long time. So this is about 92 set. I think they said, yep, as in they said, what are we doing tonight, brain? Because I said, uh, I've got a cunning plan, my lord. Actually, that's from Black Adder. That's not from Pinky of the Brain. <laughs> don't know. I mean. And again, maybe I just triggered something. I've got a cunning plan, me lord. Love that. Although I got to admit, the first series of Black Adders, not all that great. All right. That is the news tonight. Of course, I was just talking about drive through RPG. Don't forget, the gaming gang, thus the Dispatch, is affiliated with the One Bookshelf site. So if you are going to go visit drive through RPG, please stop by the gaminggang.com first, click on one of our banner ads, and that way if you happen to make a purchase, I get a little portion of that sale. And all those nickels, dimes, and quarters really do add up and help keep the gaminggang.com around. Do you want to mention we have got a couple of sales going on at the one bookshelf sites. So there is a there's a D&D &D settings sale at drive through RPG, which you would think would be over at, at Dungeon Masters Guild, but it's not because over at Dungeon Masters Guild, they have a special sale going on for Domains of Dread to celebrate Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. But you got a couple of sales going on right now. So, Flaming Heron says, seems it is 66 pages or thereabouts. If the contents from the full-size preview on drive-thru is be believed, I would believe it. If that is the page count that we are seeing from the preview, then that is the page count. A little pricey, though, gotta say. Gotta say. For a, a premium soft cover, basically a soft cover book, uh, 18 bucks. 10 bucks for the PDF, 66 pages. I don't know, Green Ronin. 
A little pricey. little pricey in my opinion. So Flaming Heron said, had a look because they're a fan of the Age books and have a few of them. I've always heard good things about uh, Dragon Age and Fantasy Age. Just like I've always heard good, good things about 13th Age. I've just never seen it. In fact, today I tweeted out uh, uh, asking if there's any particular role-playing game systems that people feel deserve some more love that maybe I should provide some, some coverage for. Let me know. All right, so before we jump in to take a look at Dive, there are a few things that I did want to tackle relatively quickly. But first, let me grab a quick sip here. So last night I mentioned that I am going to shift focus of the gaming gang more towards role-playing games than board games. I got a couple of emails. People are thinking, well, I'm not going to cover board games anymore. Well, that's not the case. That's, that's certainly not the case. There are companies out there that I have great relationships with that I love working with and providing coverage of their releases. That is not going to stop. So it's just, I'm getting, I'm getting tired of the way some of these companies treat me. Like, and I've, I've said it before, like it's, it's like a privilege for me to provide you know, coverage of their games. And we're not even talking about getting review copies. It's just news. And yeah, I don't need that. I just don't need it. So for, you know, the GMTs of the world, the AEGs, the Worthingtons, the Mark H walkers, uh, there's quite a few board game companies, check games, uh, Cosmos, they're all awesome. They're all fantastic to work with. I am going to continue covering their games. I mean, if they send them along, right? But some of the other companies, it's just like, you know what? And eh, I don't need it. I don't need the hassle. It's like I've done, I've paid my dues. I've been doing this 11 years and I have been playing tabletop games for over 40 years. I don't, I don't feel I need to, you know, like grovel or anything like that or, or you know, kowtow to, uh, to people. But I still, I'm still going to cover board games, and you're still going to get news about board games, both on this show as well as on thegaminggang.com. So I, I, don't, I don't know why some folks caught the show last night and, and got the impression that it's like, I'm done with board games. I said, now I'm just changing focus. All right. Other thing I had mentioned, we're seeing more and more Kickstarters that are saying that they're not going to go to retail. They are not going to go to retail distribution. And we do notice, or at least I have noticed, when I see that, they tend to be pulling in more money than if nobody says anything about that. And I got to be honest, the way things are going with distributors, for, as far as geek culture goes, these distributors are kind of getting their asses handed to them lately, especially Diamond, Alliance. There's, there's a few smaller that focus specifically on tabletop gaming, like there's uh, PDX. So you are, this is just my, my opinion. It's my gut reaction. I know I've, I've, I've said stuff in the past and people are like, Oh, he's out of his mind. And then I'm right on the money. But you know, there are times that I'm not right either. I get the feeling these companies keep doing the, well, we're not, you know, this is, this is going to be exclusive to Kickstarter. If you want this, even if you are a gaming store, you have to make your purchase through Kickstarter. I won't be too shocked if some of these distributors start saying, well, guess what? We're not carrying your games now. We're not going to distribute your games, which isn't necessarily a, a horrible thing. It's just a hell of a lot more work for people to get their games in stores. So I just... Uh, I don't know. I don't... There's some weird... 
there are some less than stellar, I guess I'll say, um, things going on in the tabletop gaming industry that leaves me kind of scratching my head or just don't seem to be good for the hobby as a whole. Now, I think part of that stems from the fact that early in the pandemic, a lot of these companies were barely hanging on. And then as things progressed, people were staying home a lot. They started spending some money on Amazon on board games and stuff. So that's why uh, Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, they've had a fantastic year as far as that goes. Their toy sales are just bottomed out. They're terrible. Uh, Hasbro had a, had a horrible 2020, but Wizards of the Coast made them money. So, but yeah, I, yeah there's some things going on. I'm just, I don't know. I just don't think <laughs> they're great for the hobby, such as, you know, everybody trying to throw miniatures in the games that don't necessarily need miniatures. And people are sitting there shelling out 200 bucks for a game. I don't know. So Flaming Huron says people may have heard me say I was focusing on RPGs and assumed the worst. <laughs> if only they had just listened. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's amazing how, how I, I, I'm i told that I say things that I don't say. Or as, I'm told that I never said something that I definitely said. And there's, you know, there's evidence, right? You can go watch it. You can see it. Anyway, Fleming Heron says, yeah, not a fan of Kickstarters, which don't come to full release. Kind of keeps people hostage. Yeah, that's kind of how I look at it, too. If that's the correct word, getting them when they're released to Kickstarter rather than waiting. See, another aspect in this doesn't. I The Castle Panic Kickstarter isn't necessarily part of this, but uh Another aspect of it is that when they say, hey, you know, this isn't going to go to retail. This is exclusively through Kickstarter and you got to buy it through Kickstarter or a pledge manager afterwards. What also happens there is now you're you're basically at the mercy of whoever that company is paid to do Kickstarter reviews. You're not going to see outside reviewers even after the fact simply because the only way to get it is to back the Kickstarter. Now, I do know uh, that, well, I shouldn't say no, I'm pretty sure that Fireside Games will sell this deluxe collection if they have extra copies, of course, from their website. I think they're going to do that. I'm not positive. But <laughs> this about 92 says FOMO sucks. So JPF says the miniature upgrade pack for Dune Imperium costs almost as much as the base game. I know. Got to say, though, the base game is a really good game. But and, and people busted my chops for my review of Dune Imperium, which off the top of my head, I think gave gave it a nine out of ten because I really did like it. But visually, it's not the most appealing game out there. Visually, it's functional. Is I mean, nobody's going to see that game and go, wow, what are you guys playing? You know, when you're at a convention, what's that? It's not one of those games. Now, of course, if you got the upgrade back with all the minis and cool stuff, maybe so. Might be the case. All right. So this about says Dune Imperium is a great game. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I have I gotta uh get Elliot Miller, my best friend, who I talk about all the time. I gotta get him playing it. He has not had an opportunity to play it. So next time we get together, which might be this weekend, I don't know. I'm bringing it with. Okay, one last thing, real quick, and then we will jump into dive. Is that if you are a follower of the gaming gang 
here on YouTube, if you watch the videos all the time, I want to ask you a favor. Of course, yes, I always ask you to give a thumbs up to the videos. What I would like to also ask is that you comment on the videos. I have kind of been keeping an eye out now. I had always been told that comments really help pump the visibility of videos. And I have noticed that that really is the case. That, uh, cause you know, there's all the analytics and stuff like that, which aren't all that fantastic to be honest on the back end of YouTube that you can check out. And uh, I have seen that. I have really seen that. So if you could please, and you don't have to write a novella, you can just say, Oh, Hey, yeah. You know, X, Y, Z game that maybe I talked about looks kind of cool or thanks for another great show or Thanks for having a show if it's not great. But I would ask that you please comment on the videos from now on. Now, I don't know if you can comment on videos while you're watching the live stream. I have no idea. I doubt it. I Who knows? I don't know. So uh, Leonardo uh, and I am not going to even attempt to pronounce the rest of that uh, has joined us in chat. Welcome, Leonardo. I believe this is the first time that uh, you have stopped in for a visit. So make yourself comfortable. So Fleming Heron says uh, totally disavowed 92 as far as the, uh, the movie artwork being used for Dune Imperium. And it, the cool thing was it was artwork that was inspired by the actors and those character designs. It was not just stills from the movie that I really liked. So Flaming Heron says works wonders with some of the MMOs, which I've seen releasing the Kickstarter. It's disgusting because a few have packs, which cost hundreds of dollars and haven't released as far as like expansion minis and stuff like that. So, so Flaming Heron says, yes, they've heard a similar thing with YouTube videos, and they're happy to give a comment if that helps. Yeah, it's really weird, because even I've I've noticed, like, the live streams, because we don't pull. We don't pull tons of people for, for, the, for the live streams. Um, oh, so Flaming Heron says, no, it wasn't that. More the fear of missing out. Gotcha. Gotcha, the fear of missing out. Sorry. Sometimes, you know, I, I don't know what's going on in chat, even though I'm looking right at it. Anyway. All right. So we are going to be taking a look at Dive, which is from Sit Down Games. And it's Sit Down Exclamation Point Games. I'm going to get these names wrong. So I apologize right off the bat. It is designed by Romain. Uh, Cater Dijon and Anthony Perron with artwork provided by Alexandre Bonvalat or Bonvalet. Said I know I'm getting them wrong. The game is for one of four players, ages eight and up, plays in around 20 to 30 minutes. It's arriving in stores. My understanding is it's coming in June. It may have already arrived in some stores, but I think most of the online retailers are indicating a June release. It's going to carry an MSRP of $34.99. So let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got Dive. As I pointed out earlier, this is not the finished game. This is, which it's kind of funny. This is kind of what I assume was sent out to Kickstarter reviewers because this kickstarted last year. And I think this is what, what came out. But there is an aspect of this game that people are commenting on. Supposedly, this is a very interesting game. Very well done. And that we have in here. So let's take a look at the back. I am not going to read everything from the back of the box. But it says, Your island has a traditional ceremony in which the most daring compete in a free diving competition to retrieve the sacred stone thrown from the top of the cliff. All the divers plunge into the ocean, looking for help from
from sea turtles and manta rays amidst the sharks. Bum, bum, bum. So I understand there's like levels to this that we are going to see. So and once again, I want to point out these are kind of prototype components. Just like there wasn't um, there wasn't any shrink wrap on this, right? So anyway, uh, so Leonardo says, yes, first time watching the live stream, but they follow the channel whenever they can. Well, thank you very much. Flaming Heron says, uh, sorry, I should have made it clear, but YouTube doesn't like more than 200 characters in a chat comment. Yes, I knew that. Because it shows on my my end here where it's like, how many characters have I used when I say, howdy, gang? You know, it says out of 200. All right, so we've got uh, some rules that are just basically stapled together. So it gives us an overview. So it says the game plays simultaneous for all divers. They must secretly program their dives. By observing the stacked ocean cards, they try to perceive at which depths they will find sea turtles and manta rays ready to help them, as well as sharks that they do not want to disturb. They each have air tokens that they can use to program their actions. The diver who retrieves the sacred stone wins. Dive explores the notion of perception, the ability of the divers to observe the ocean through a deck of transparent cards and to benefit from it. All right, so we're getting kind of our setup. This is how we set things up. So assembling the cardboard frame, which uh, is already assembled in the box. Playing around. The different phases of the round. So we have a descent board. I think that's our player board here for oxygen. So here's an example of a complete round as well. It's got some variant simplified version for children. Companions. You get to choose a companion. A giant octopus, orca, dolphins, great white shark, clownfish. There's some of those. We've got the village chief who is an automated diver. So we got an example of a complete round with an automated diver. And then we get to see some of the other games that are available through sit down games. All right. So see, as we can see, not a whole lot by way of rules. So this right here is the aspect of the game that a lot of people have talked about. Now, once again, this doesn't look anything like what we see in the rules or on the box. Because once again, I think this is just kind of prototype, right? So, but this is to, to allow us to lay these in here to give us the view. All right, so we've got some different cards. We've got some tokens there. We've got some various different ocean life. I think these are your, your companions. And then we also have this board here. So we've got a few different boards. So let's put this off to the side. So these are the player boards. I like the art. The art looks pretty nice on these. So we've got four of these. And these are almost on, these, these are like on pressed board. That's kind of wild. It's not cardstock. It's like pressed board. And then we have these little screens like so. So you would be hiding your board from other players like so. So I know you're supposed to uh, arrange what depth that you're diving down to. So we got those four boards here. We've got the little screens as well. 
So we've got that. You want to get a better look here. I'll zoom in. Zoom all the way in. Give you a better look at this artwork. Like I said, very cool. I, I really do like the art style to this. Giving you an idea. Then we got this other board here, which I think this is kind of like a main board, maybe. So the different levels here. All right, let's go back to this. Because this is what the big deal is. Well, let's flip it here. Now, I guess it, it's kind of bent a little. <laughs> so try to get these. So this is, for an example, one of the Come on, you. I don't want to use the other side because the other side is all like scratched up and everything. This looks like this is supposed to be the bottom, but that's where it's fitting. Now, like I said, once again, these are just like kind of prototype components and you probably can't see too well. Let's see if that gives you a better, better look here. So you can see that these transparencies have different things on them. And each of these are a different level is what I, is what I understand. So, and then you have to find out what level is what, and that's where they're talking about the perception, having to use perception to know so for an example, like here, we've got like a hammerhead shark, which is like right up on top. We've got the sea turtles. We have some fish. We've got, uh, looks like some, some undersea vegetation, but these are all on different cards. So I'll kind of give you a better idea. I don't have anything that's solid white. That's why I was kind of glancing around to see if I had anything that I could I could share with you with a white background. But I can tell you right now, this would not be a game that you would want to try to play on a table that has any sort of like tablecloth with designs or anything on it because you're not going to remake it, be able to make any of this stuff out. Probably going to want to have... Um, like a, like a white piece of paper, printer paper, something like that. You could put underneath this here so you could see it far better. All right. So we've got quite a lot of these. So you can barely make out anything on the dark background that I utilize here. But I will also point out that these these little um, this is better. Unless it's up against something, it's kind of tough to even see what's on these. So kind of interesting. I'm wondering what these holes are for. I'm wondering if the holes are there. If these represent a certain level, or if they're there to help you pick stuff up. I don't know. Look at that. I'm trying to get it out of the bottom of the box. I can't. So I'll, I'll put this at an angle so we get some glare. You see, we've got holes there. This doesn't have any. Some, like this one has like a big hole in the center. So does this one. This one has three holes, like almost like three finger holes in it. I'm going to have to check this out. I am going to have to check this out. So, very, very cool. All right, looks like we've got... Uh, so, this about says the holes look like they represent bubbles. That could be it. I mean, that, that very possibly could be it. 
Big bubbles, little bubbles. Yeah, there aren't a lot of them that have the bubbles on it or the holes punched in it. So, nice. All right, so we've got the player screens. Now, once again, I'm going to have to point out these are all prototype. This is not what you're going to get when this shows up in stores next month. We've got the very different boards here. We've got the screens. Oh, you know what? We didn't take a look at the tokens in that. Hold on. Looks like we got some cards. These are different kinds of cards because they have different numbers on them, so I'm not sure what those are. Once again, this is just an unboxing first look. So haven't even read the rule book. We're just taking a peek. So we've got that. We also have, these look like those companions that we saw. Like so. So we have, there's the clownfish. Got a sea turtle. Looks like a little porpoise. A larger one. There's a squid. The orca. Uh, great white shark. And then one of these oddball fish that have like the lantern on its head. It's from, uh, Finding Nemo. So, so those are those. And then we have these discs, which we have various different numbers on. Then we also have these little discs here, which I'll take a guess. That's where the these are used for the players to, to mark what level they're diving down to. All right, cool. They have two sides to them. Looks like one side has a number without a shark, and the other has a number with a shark. Put all this back as well. Looks well, kind of interesting. Doug Roberts has popped in. So Doug says that they were uh, they were at the hospital all day. Hospital, I should say, all day, having some tests done. Well, hopefully everything's okay. Hopefully those tests will come back uh, good for you. Yeah, I have a doctor's appointment on the 24th myself, but it's it's just with my GP. It's not with the cardiologist or anything like that. All right. So as I started before, we've got the big board. We've got the player boards. We've got the player screens. We have the companions, the optional companions. We've got this little deck of cards here. And then we have all these tokens. Then we have uh, the holder as well as all these different transparent tiles as well as a short rule book. And that is what we find when we take everything from the prototype that I received of Dive outside the box. So Doug says he's got his fingers crossed. Well, we got our fingers crossed for you as well. Right. So Flaming Heron says, yeah, they're hoping the test come back positive or negative, whichever is better. That's what I had thought too. But I was like, I was going to say, well, I don't know. It's like, maybe I should just say, hey, hopefully the tests come back the way you want them to come back. So JPF says my hammy fingers are probably not good for this game. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway. I will have a review of Dive in the very near future. Probably going to get a chance to play that this weekend with uh, with some of my family. Of course, not the big gamers, but 
we'll, we'll see what we can do. All right. So that is it for this time out. Do you want to point out on tomorrow's show? It is War Game Wednesday. I'm going to unbox and take a first look at Imperium Classics, which is from Osprey Games. We were going to look at Undaunted North Africa, but I figure we can we can do that next week because this is just coming out. And this is a kind of a deck builder civilization game. So it could be uh could be kind of interesting. So this is on tomorrow's show. We're going to take a look at that. Then on Thursday's show, I am going to take a first look and page through Mutant Crawl Classics from Goodman Games. I recently reviewed both the Dungeon Crawl Classics core book as well as the Dungeon Crawl Classics first-time fan kit. So uh, definitely, definitely check those out if you are curious about Dungeon Crawl Classics. But on Thursday, we're going to take a look at Mutant Crawl Classics. Then on next Monday's show, I will unbox and take a first look at Sheepy Time, which is coming soon from AEG. This is another family game where you are, I think you're playing as sheep. Yes, you are a dream sheep that people count in order to go off to dreamland. So I think you're trying to avoid the wolf in this too. Could be kind of fun. Could be kind of cool. So we will look at that on Monday as well. All right. So once again, let me ask you, everybody out there, do me a favor. If you watch the Gaming Gang Dispatch from time to time, or if you watch it all the time, please start commenting on the videos. You don't have to go crazy with, you know, paragraphs long comments. But if you could comment a little bit on the videos, it will actually help boost the visibility of the dispatch videos or any of the gaming gang videos. If you're checking out any of my reviews or previous first looks, things like that. Anyway, also, if you like this video, by all means, give it a quick thumbs up, subscribe to the gaming gang channel. If you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell, because it'll not only let you know when the dispatch airs live, Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. Also let you know when I upload other videos, such as my upcoming review of Call of Cthulhu Reign of Terror from Chaosium Inc. Of course, those of you who are watching live, thank you very much. I always appreciate all of you spending some time hanging out, keeping me company. Then again, I know a lot of people don't have an opportunity to watch live. If you watch after the fact, even if you're watching on Memorex, Thank you very much as well. I will be back tomorrow. We are going to be taking a look at Imperium Classics. And everybody enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, or whatever day this happens to be that you're watching this video. And of course, as I wrap up all my videos, which I am probably going to be changing up my wrap up soon, but because we are still in the midst of a pandemic, I certainly hope every one of you out there is being smart and still staying safe. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, if you haven't subscribed to the Gaming Gang channel yet, click right here. If you'd like to see the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch, click right up there. And if you want to trust YouTube's algorithm to give you something to watch, click right there. Once again, thanks so much for watching. And everybody, please wear a mask.